All right, guys, last four box, 2016-17 select basketball, eBay break number three. Now, they didn't ask him to do that much at LSU, uh, but it, it, it's not to say that he can't do it. I think they just didn't, it, he hadn't developed that skill yet, but I think it's possible that he can do it. Yeah, LSU, when you went to the Chargers, you know, the LA Chargers, a lot was put on your shoulders to be that franchise guy that carried that offense. For Leonard Fournette, does he come in with the same kind of expectations and pressure for that wrong pick? Are we expecting him to you know, carry this offense? Because he's a big feature back. Without question, Bucky, I mean, when you get drafted in the top five as a running back, it takes top ten, you are expected to carry the load uh, from day one. And I remember the first thing Noel Turner said to me after they drafted me was get ready for 25 carries a game. And I'm pretty much I'm pretty much sure that's the same thing that they're telling Leonard. Get ready to carry the football 25 times a game. He can handle it. Is he your favorite back in the draft? Um, I mean, he got... Uh, I wouldn't say my favorite. I, I'm a I'm a Christian and a Joe Joe Mixon type of guy. I mean, I just like the the kind of runner I was. You know, I like to do everything, come out the backfield. So I look at runners like that. For me, the guys that I favor are the guys that are dual threat type guys. And Christian McCaffrey and Joe Mixon are both types of running backs. Right. How about I go inside the box to so step outside the box? What the common thought is, as you were saying, this this, this makes some sense. If you want him to carry the rock 25 times, which is rare in the NFL these days, how about don't use him on third down and not use him on pass pro and let him take those days, you know, yell and do his thing and, and have and have Fournette get his rest then because what he's on this team for is not to pass pro, it's not to catch balls out of the backfield, it's to be that him. It's to dominate and impose as well. So maybe not playing on third downs is actually something that could become a strength yeah. for him. And, and I think that's what we'll see early on. I don't expect them to say, hey, we're going to use you on third down early on. He's going to be the first or second down guy. That's going to be his role. Don't think about anything else. Much like when I got to San Diego, Terrell Fletcher was still there. He handled third downs early on. So that I, until I got up to speed to sub blitzes and all the different things that happens in the National Football League on defense, I had to first learn first and second down, and I'm sure that's the same thing that they're going to ask him to do. And when you say until you got up to speed, we're talking about eh, like three to five days. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, about three weeks. And from that moment forward, all right, so we've got four picks so far having already gone off the board. Three of them have been uh, well celebrated, and one of them has left Bucky gobsmacked, and he still is at a loss for words for why the Bears would have done what they did. Let's find out what the Titans do. They stay put. They pick it around. Raptors out of 49. Here with the Rams. With the fifth pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Corey Davis, wide receiver wow. of Western Michigan. It's the green box. I'll look at the C. The C? Yes. Tell the C. I know that there have been plenty of analysts who believe that this guy is the number one receiver in the class, that he's a dominant player. I'm not a bad, you know, I think he's a nice player. I think he's a guy that has outstanding skill. He has a nice skill set. But I didn't necessarily see a guy that was an absolute game changer from day one. Yes, he put up nice and Pistons. He dominated that conference. But when I saw him play against big time competition, I didn't see a guy dominate consistently. Plus, you're talking about a guy coming off injury. Even though that injury to me isn't significant, you didn't get a chance to see him work out. We don't really know what his speed is. And I just am literally of taking small school guys at the top of the board because the transition typically is a little longer than it is for a guy that's played this competition. You know, it's interesting because... What's your... What do you mean? What do you like better? Uh, Jumbo. No, I don't know. I kind of like the hobby because you get the oranges, so... Good-looking routes. Has the size, speed, I mean, everything. 
So how does that weigh out when you're in a scout room and you see everything you want to see, but you see it against the level of competition, you're not entirely comfortable? With? Well, what, what, what you typically have to do is you have to look at more bowls. The competition. I mean, they have to dominate against smaller school competition. But when I look at his games this year, three games he put up big numbers. Ball State, he had over 270 yards. Northern Illinois, he had 150 yards. And North Carolina Central. That comprised probably about 600 of the 1,400 yards that he did. So to me, I didn't see a guy that absolutely knocked it out the box. Because remember, the last guy that came out of the map and was a first-round pick was Randy Moss. And I'm not quite ready to say that Corey Davis is the next Randy Moss. All right, we need to uh, get some Philadelphia flavor. So let's get back on site with Dave Damashek and I think, gentlemen. I love spinning the head to what it means for the Titans. Oh, man. But it's just great seeing these guys. With their Washington. Family. But break it down for us. You're very excited about Corey Davis's future, huh? Yeah, see, I like the look. Just comparison and comparing him, I call him a little baby Teal, Terrell Owens. And even though he didn't go against top competition, you never knew what led him to Western Michigan. Might have been grades, might have got in trouble in, in high school. But at the same time, man, this man is a work of art. He can run inside, he can run outside. And what I like about Corey Davis the most, he catches the ball in the track. And that's what you have to do in the NFL. You're not going to be wide open all the time. These corners are real good in the NFL. So when you get a guy of that size, six to some change, almost 210 pounds, Corey Davis, and you have a run game, and you got a young Marcus Mariota, Man, I'm telling you, they're going for a recipe for success. Mm, don't sleep on that AFC style, though. He's starting to get uh, pretty interesting there. Hey, let's uh, hear what uh, the great Michael Fabiano thinks about Corey Davis's fantasy potential. Take it away there, Fabs. Thanks, my friend. And I like this move from a fantasy perspective. Tennessee doesn't have a number one wide receiver unless you consider with some mountains that I think they don't. And he can come in and make an impact right away. Great dynasty Who's the Jets so quarterback? quarterback? I forget. Gives him another weapon in that offense. So Davis showing you a team that lasts the number one. He's got the upside to be a number one, both on the field and from a fantasy perspective, long term. Not Sanchez anymore. For fantasy fans. Izzy, let's is it, over to you. Is it Fitzgerald? Fitzgerald's? Hey, thanks, fans. Uh, maybe James and Hedgo. This has to, to be a quarterback. He tweeted this before the pick is announced. Finish the other clock. I'm thinking as a wide receiver, he was absolutely right. And how about the love for Corey Davis being the highest picked wide receiver out of the MAC? Uh, representing the match with a nice little emoji at the end, and also a little love from uh, Antonio Brown as well. Hey, no excuses as to why you can't be great. Meanwhile, we'll see if Randy Moss has anything to say about this. He, of course, took his spot, Corey Davis did, but uh, that's how people are feeling right now. We'll see how he does. Oh, yeah, Hackenberg, that's right. All right, thank you. Mark is uh, the dating of Thomas. All right, yeah, no quarterback then. Receiver? Corey Davis. It's quite entertaining. We'll step aside for a quick moment as the Jets are on the clock. Get you back to the lecture with Roger Goodell because we got to see the Jets pick live. Can you get ruckus in there? Ooh. Live from New York City. Uh, it's never too early to talk football. Denver. This guy is a home run hitter. And it's 7 a.m. every weekday. We've got the best morning show on sports television. This guy is on a showtime outfit with three hours of off-season coverage. That's great stuff. A lot more of that. Special guests. There's a lot of people that know how to win. Jazz. Two people know how to win. And more. Make the morning the highlight of your day. Yeah, let's go. Good morning football. Weekdays at 7, only on NFL Network. From the no-jive zone of the Dave Damashek football program, who would win in a fight, a Golden Knight or a Silver and Black Raider? To the heroes of the there we go NFL for the uh, Trailblazers. Every year. And that's why I could see the Vikings winning the division if everything went well. And if you're more into X's and O's, then check out Move to Six. You have to be able to finish. You have to be able to get the quarterback down. I think these would be better than anybody else. Check out NFL.com slash podcast or iTunes for our audio show. Or NFL.com slash podcast and YouTube for our video content. We cast a players only vote for Marvelous Speed, Super Show, is doing it all. And ask them to rank the top 100 players in the NFL. Yes. This is going to be on there. Who has earned their peers' ultimate respect? To see them at the highest level, it's no surprise. If you're watching the video, Spurs. Who is that alpha dog? Let's go! 
the top 100 players of 2017 premieres Monday, May 1st, only on NFL Network. Celebrate the game you love. In a whole new way. It's got the look. Are you guys grabbing another one? The attitude. If you did grab the basketball, yeah. Your grab is very small, and so. You really didn't think I was going to the gym. You, yeah, I got to get a little sick tomorrow. So there's another one in there. Careful, guys. Sorry about the mess. Don't watch. Don't die. On NFL now. Yeah, these are late. Or not late, but. Alright, how about we check in on the draft war room? We had to re schedule the break. The New York Jets. And you know their picks will be received with, uh, with something. Most likely booze. Um, here's an interesting little nugget about the in Atlanta. Since 2011, um, and that was draft, that was uh, draft awards presented by Honda. The New York Jets have drafted the most quarterbacks, not the first round, just the most quarterbacks you since 2011. Greg McElroy in 2011, Geno Smith in 2013, uh, uh, Bryce Petty in 2015, and then of course last year in the second round, Christian Hackenberg. Likelihood that this could be Deshaun Warren. Uh, Zero. They already got Taj Boyd. They've already got a Clemson Tiger. Who do we think it is then? I think it's, well, you know, Jamal being there is kind of interesting. I think it's going to be O.J. Howard. Go get the offense. Go get the best tight end in the draft. But Jamal Adams now, I'm not sure they knew he was falling. Marshawn Lattimore as well. They need a yeah. Yeah. Buck? I mean, I can't think. O.J. Howard, who's going to coach him? Christian Hackenberg. Yeah. Let's find yeah, out who it is. Yeah, out to no, Philadelphia no. and the commissioner. Yeah. <laughs> With the sixth pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Jamal Adams, defensive back, LSU. Pacers, Dallas, Deron Williams. He's willing to embrace the stage that the New York media, specifically the New York Jets media, demands because of this run of utility that they have been on. Um, I don't want to push forward yet to the, the Chargers, but I do want to go back to something you said, Bucky. At the start, before this thing even started, you said, depending on where quarterbacks go, it's when you start to see really good players getting pushed down the board. And this was a number two, number three prospect on so many to me, I think he's the best prospect. He's the best prospect. I think he's the best prospect in the draft. And he's pushed all the way to six. He gets to fall to number six. The fact that the Bears took Mr. Trubisky coming up to the apple cart, and we talked about teams would benefit from teams reaching to take quarterbacks. This is one of the beneficiaries the New York Jets getting to do with it. Pelicans. And, and, and I guess, you know, it, it's also important to, I think, acknowledge that it's not just quarterbacks that you can reach. What did we say going into this draft? The Tennessee Titans had to find a number one receiver, you know, to try to help out Marcus Mariota. Yeah. They've got the running backs. They've got a good looking old line, but they need a number one. And, and, and you feel like maybe they reach. Because I'm not of the but, but here's what I'll say, because I kind of came off a little harsh on Corey Davis. Corey Davis is a great fit in Tennessee. Where I valued him at was middle to the bottom of the first round. They saw the player that they wanted. They made the pick. It worked for them. However, I believe that they were better players at that spot. But at the end of the day, like, Tennessee Titans can care what I 
Like they want the player. They got the player. I know what you're getting at is. It, it, it obviously takes two. Ooh, the Evan game. Turner it's for the Blazers. Black uh, 101. Going to might have ruined their plans a little bit if they plan on trading back. But, you know, let's remember this now. And just speaking specific, specifically of Corey Davis, you always talk about putting it in the paint. There we go, Marcus. His final three seasons in college. I mean, that, that's productive. From a touchdown standpoint, and that matters. It does feel like a reach for need, but and also because he never ran. Which so this is very rare to go pick when you're a wide receiver and you haven't run. They don't have a verified time. Well, the uh, pick could just went off the board. Of course, Jamal Adams, your number one rated prospect. Somebody who knows a little something about defensive backs out in Philadelphia with our Dave Damashek. Hi, Taylor. Dave. Yeah, you know, I you come from an organization that all man, the two of these in a case. On the board, not need. What do you think here for the New York Jets? A lot of holes to fill. They resist the temptation to go quarterback here and take 60. what a lot of people are saying best player out there. I think they got the best player on the board in the first round. And when you talk to people around the LSU campus, or even I had the opportunity to talk to Ron Clark and with LSU, they say by far he's a stud. By far he's a natural born leader. By far, if you just watch his tape, he can do pretty much everything. He can sit in a box and blitz. He can come up for run support. And he can bait the quarterback and throw the ball. He has the speed to do that. When you got a guy like a Jamal Adams, he's not afraid to put out his face, which he's not. It's rare. Every little moment you get a rare occasion where you have good safety in the draft. This is a rare occasion where you have good safety in this draft. So I think that's a perfect fit. Yeah, this one has that whiff that we're going to look back at the draft board in a few years and say, Jamal Adams fell all the way to six. How did that happen? Shame on those uh, five teams in front of him. Okay. No, no, no. That was higher than I was. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and by the way, if I may extrapolate, remember when the Arizona Cardinals started to emerge uh, in this decade? Todd Bowles was coaching up a great secondary yeah. then. You can imagine that he'll uh, have some good ideas for how to use Jamal Adams there. With the Jets, uh, let's get it over to our district, though, right now. Hey, a lot of activity uh, on Twitter, guys. Excited for Jamal Adams. And it's easy to see why that leadership, that in factor that we heard the guys uh, with money talking about, certainly on display with uh, mm. some more he's getting from guys like Sewell Craven. Jamal Adams to the Jets. He took him. Yeah, I'm not he's feeling good tonight, guys. I mean, if I'm still feeling like, like man, I have to grow up. I might. In that jersey in the preseason. Uh, how about this one from uh, former LSU star? I don't know about the We'll run on beyond this time for you. Wrong colors, right city. They will be seeing each other in the Big Apple, no doubt. How about Tyron Matthews? Shout out to uh, the Adams era. Presidential Adams is how he represents himself on Twitter. So a lot of love from the current NFL stars to a future NFL star after hearing his name called tonight. And let's check in on the draft war room presented by Honda. Not the first time the Chargers are drafting. We see Dean Spanos, they're the owner, and head coach Anthony Lee, but the first time they're drafting at the Los Angeles Chargers. Bucky and Lance, as that is draft war rooms presented by Honda. The Chargers, again, much like the Jets, so many people that penciled in Malik Hooker as the perfect fit for a Gus Bradley defense. But now you think about Melvin Ingram on one side, Joey Bosa on the other, and Jonathan Allen has tumbled down the draft board here. And you think about what that front could look like. I mean, I have been taught that the front end can affect the back end far more than the back end can affect the front end. However, in this case, center field safety, something that they've been lacking since they lost Eric Weddle, could fill a huge void. Malik Hooker is one of the most instinctive center field safeties that I've seen since Ed Reed entered the league. I don't know if you can pass on a guy who has a knack for getting his hands on the ball like that. Damian Lillard for the well, Trailblazers. Here's a wild card. You got Philip Rivers and JJ Redick for the Clippers. Out of here. <laughs> and if Big Philly is gone, who's going to be quarterback? And how about if a, if a wild card wins? Well, see, I didn't think you were going to go quarterback. I thought you might say Mike Williams to try to get him that big well, target. That's a huge name. But I think that makes sense. The wild card would be a Bashan Yeah. That's what it is. Pick is in. Here comes Roger Goodell. No way they're going to take Watson. Well, unless they think Rivers is about done. With the seventh pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Chargers select Mike Williams, wide receiver, Clemson. 
We have heard that. They got that workout in the last second, Bucky, in, in draft grade. It's an A minus. It's an A minus to me because he is Knicks. a number one receiver. He's big, he's physical, he does a great job of playing with 50 50 balls. You pair Mike Williams up with Keenan Allen. You have two monsters on the outside. In this division where everyone is loaded up with firepower, you have to be able to score points to be the likes of the Chiefs, the Broncos, and the Raiders. Phillip Rivers is nearing the end of his career. You want to give him every opportunity to make plays in the passing game? They haven't had dominant receivers on the outside since they had Dirk Jackson and maybe even Malcolm Floyd. Two big bodies on the outside. I love this from an offensive perspective in LA. You know, and, and the other thing is, all of these highlights that we're watching right now, just dragging people into the end zone, and just, just bulldogging them all over the yard. See, this is the thing that I, that I really like about Mike Williams is you have guys who are going to be your, your, your 57, 58 catch the game where Deshaun Jackson's down the field, and John Ross may end up being like that. But this is the guy that you strap it on and you say, you know what, can you get us 103 catches like Andre Johnson did yep. for the Texans? And that's what I like about him is he fits Phil Rivers now, but he'll fit a new quarterback later as well. And you see him getting the call there. And in the news as he has overcome the emotion that he's headed out to Los Angeles. And if you're a wide receiver and you're being picked in the top ten and you come to the realization that Philip Rivers is the guy that's going to be throwing you passes, you've got to be awfully excited. Now, here's what I said because I've been looking at Twitter and people saying I'm hating on Corey Davis. But this is what I'll say about Mike Williams. Mike Williams against secondary loaded with first-round talent, Ohio State, Alabama, was dominant on the outside. So when you're evaluating players, you're looking for those those seminal moments, I've seen those moments from Mike Williams. We will see if we see those same moments from well, Joe Well, think about it. You know, who was assigned to Mike Williams? Uh, who's going to be the number one corner selected in this draft? Marshawn Lattimore. Who then did he have to see? Marlon Humphrey, who was working his way up. Knocked him out. So, so, that, so that's what I'm saying. Competition matters. I've seen this guy do it against guys that we will see play on Sundays. I don't know how many of those Mac cornerbacks will play on Sunday. How much How much do you think, you know, because, I, I again, we don't know who's going to be selected. We just heard that maybe they wanted to find yeah. another one receiver. Yeah, right. Um, but how much of this is a product of them maybe feeling like they can get that safety in the second round because it is deep in it's that loaded. compared to wide receiver? It's loaded. And so that's the benefit. We talked about supply and demand. When there are so many safeties available, I mean, you can get a Marcus Williams in the second round. Maybe Obi Melifani who could also be a second round pick. Because of that, and you look at the wide receivers, there are only a handful of number one receivers available in this draft. It was Davis, Williams, John Ross, depending on the scheme. The rest of the guys are more complimentary playmakers on the outside. Because of that, if you want a true number one, you're going to have to take them early. All right, Babs. Uh, Keenan Allen has been a high pick in fantasy drafts. Unfortunately, the injuries have dogged him. How does Mike Williams fit into your scheme when it comes to drafting fantasy receivers? The first thing I think of is they've got a lot of mouths to feed their money. Keenan Allen, who has missed the last year and a half, basically, but he's expected to be back. Tyrell Williams had a good season last year. So did Dontrell Lemon. They've got Travis Benjamin. And, oh, by the way, they've got two good tight ends in Hunter Henry and Antonio Gates. So I think him making an immediate fantasy impact might not happen. You may be looking at 700 yards and five or six touchdowns for Williams in 2017. Long term, he has much more value. But... This is clearly really good news for Phil Rivers. All right, Fabs, and we are going to get out to Philadelphia for the Panthers pick, where 2014 Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year presented by Nation. All right, here we go. Davis is going to make the announcement for the Panthers pick. Mavs, Nets, Clippers, Trailblazers, Dallas, Knicks, Celtics. Milwaukee Bucks, Atlanta, 101, Turner, Dallas, Pacers, Bucks, or, I mean Pelicans. We will be joined Clippers, by Walter Pacers, Payton, NFL Man of the Year Award winners. Um, Spurs, Blazers, Jazz, Nuggets, Wizards, Bulls, Cavs, Pistons, Nets, and Raptors. Tonight, to make the Panthers select, 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 the Pan
the 2014 Walter Payton NFL Man What's up, Prime of the Time? Year, Thomas Davis. How y'all doing? It's extremely an honor to be here and represent the Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year. I cannot thank the NFL and Nationwide enough for allowing me to do it, do this tonight. Um, and with that said, with the eighth pick in the 2017 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers have selected Kristen McCaffrey, wide receiver, I mean, running back for Stanford. Well, Thomas, you were wrong. He could be, he could be their leading receiver and rusher. But he has to be great. You know, I give it a B plus. I give it a B plus because. All right. I believe it's time for some Bowman.